New York City, 1850. I, Dr. Thomas Holmes, certified surgeon and practitioner of medicine, can be held responsible to finding a non-arsenic mixture to preserve and disinfect human remains. These times call for such a service. With the war just upon us, it is with the utmost importance that we return our soldiers to their families and hometowns. It has been declared that we go to war with the South, and I find myself at a completed method. I visited President Lincoln and offered him to embalm the bodies from war for free of charge, and I was subsequently giving permission to do so. Soon after, I am notified that Colonel Elmer E. Ellsworth, I was born in Malta, New York. After relocating in New York City, I became the Colonel of the 11th New York Voluntary Infantry Regiment of New York City Firefighters. On May 24, 1861, along with my regiment, I spotted and went to remove the Confederate flag from the roof of the Marshall House Hotel in Alexandria, Virginia. It was there that he was shot in the head and killed by James W. Jackson. <laughs> Corporal Francis E. Brunel of Troy, New York, killed Jackson. Brunel was later awarded the Medal of Honor for his actions. The arsenic solution that was used prior to my findings was very dangerous and injurious to the medical students that were studying through dissection. I understand that embalming is not a new phenomenon, and many people find it to be, well, an invasion of the body, but it is precedent that we follow this contaminated free procedure. I believe that combining the Mons and Ganale methods along with my knowledge of Egyptian practices this will be the basis of our arterial embalming. With this new fluid, we will be granted transportation of casualties and providing opportunity to hold last rites ceremonies. There is no indication of the South to use such methods of caring for their dead. The South has neither the knowledge nor the resources to enter this new embalming trade. May I boast just a touch? Upon the return of Ellsworth's body to the Washington Navy Yard, Mrs. Lincoln was so impressed with the appearance she entrusted me with the embalming of their son, William Wallace Lincoln, who died of a fever at age 11 on February 20th, 1862.